Hey, welcome to the channel, everybody, and thanks for checking out Ham Radio Dude. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit more about this antenna right here, this real style antenna from Flatlander's Mirrors. And because when I was making this episode, I spoke about the counterpoise that I added, this little Wago connector here, but I never really showed how to do it. So today I'm going to show you how to install that Wago connector and a much simpler method to installing a counterpoise on any antenna that might not have a counterpoise. So let's get started. And if you enjoy this video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. The first method I'm gonna show you is a universal method and it works on SO239, BNC, type N, and so forth. And the way it does work is by utilizing the outer shield of the coax itself to splice in somewhere for a counterpoise. This first task can be accomplished in an abundance of ways, if that's a word. And basically what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna use a hose clamp to clamp on the counterpoise wire to the coax. See, the thing about coax is the outer shield continues on onto the connector itself. And so if we put a hose clamp, if we put a hose clamp onto the outer shield, we could put a counterpoise wire in there and we can get really detailed about things. And we could even utilize the screw on the hose clamp to put a ring connector in there and then a wire to a Wago connector for easy connect disconnect of the counterpoise. If, you wanted to get that technical. But again, this way is very simple and it works on many different antenna systems. But if you do want a more permanent solution, let's take a look at what I did to the Flatlanders mirrors and fed half wave to add the counterpoise to that. And while I thank Robert for that last tip, I wanna mention on this next tip, I did this and it might not have been the most efficient way. I'm just showing you the way I did it to add a counterpoise to this antenna. So the first thing we're going to do with this real style antenna is we're going to carefully unwind all the wire that's within the reel. We don't want that wire sitting inside when we unscrew all the screws. Which if you guessed it, we're probably going to unscrew all the screws. In this next step, which is to unscrew the screws, you might be able to get away with just unscrewing the ones that are on the side with the SO239. However, when I was doing this, I unscrewed all the screws first on the opposite side, and then I unscrewed the screws on the SO239 side. I'm going to recommend that you do the same just because that's how I did it and I know, and it's also very wise to keep track of where you put the screws. And so once I was done unscrewing the screws on the opposite side of the SO239, I took the cover off and this is why I say you might be able to get away with not taking them off on that side because there's not too much access to the counterpoise lug from that opposite side. And now you can see here, I'm going to take the screws off and it'll be more understandable why you might be able to get away with taking off the cover on just the SO239 side. Here I am removing the screws and once the screws are removed, I am going to carefully remove the cover. And the reason I say carefully is because the SO239 connector is attached to that side cover. If you rewind and go back into that footage, you'll notice my pinky points to a counterpoise lug. The counterpoise lug or the ground lug is where we're going to install a piece of magnet wire or some kind of wire, just a small piece of wire so we can drill a hole through the cover, fish the wire through after it's soldered on. And I didn't get that part on video, so I'd like to show it to you real quick here. From the outside in, we have the Wago connector, okay? The nice thing about the Wago connector is there's two little tabs on here. We can open a tab to put a wire in and secure it by closing the tab, and there's two of them. So on the other tab, we have a piece of magnet wire, which goes through this case. I drilled a small hole in the case, as we could see there. And then once that magnet wire's inside of the case, all we're going to do is we're going to solder on to the ground lug. Now you're gonna see a capacitor on there and you're gonna see some soldering already on there. Just splice into that soldering job. And just one more time, Wago connector to magnet wire, drill a hole, solder into the counterpoise. Before you go ahead and reassemble everything though, you know it's really good to have yourself a multimeter that does continuity checking and check for continuity. Now we have continuity between the outer shield of the SO239 and the inner shield because this is an NFED half wave, but we wanna make sure that we also have continuity with this Wago connector. Be 
good to go. Now you go ahead and slowly reassemble the case by putting all the screws back on just as you saw them. One thing I'll point out is the side with the SO239, you'll want to make sure all the holes line up because this could move around. You could actually get it so not all the holes are aligned. Many people will tell you you do not need a counterpoise on an NFED half wave. It's not required, and that's because an NFED half wave does actually use your coax as a counterpoise. But what happens when you don't have enough coax? See, every counterpoise should be a minimal length depending on the band you're using. And if you're not using the correct length of coax, the counterpoise is not effective or efficient. Therefore, adding a counterpoise lug allows anybody to add a counterpoise wire that's independent from the coax at any time. Hope you had a good one. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you learned something. Until next time, take care.